Hello everyone, I'm Ellen McCauley and this week's session of Pray It Off is on Lent. And I want to thank Anne, who's a special friend of Joy Germ Joan, who sent me this little, who handed me this little, what Lent means. Lent means let's eliminate negative thinking, allow doom and gloom to be daily shrinking, a blessed and holy Lenten season to you all. Thank you, Joy Jer Joan, who I've always been a very big fan of. And thank you, Anne, for bringing that in. I love Lent. Anyone who's been with me through sessions one through eight know that I love Lent. Any of, of you who did not get these, there, I'm sorry, my back is to the camera, who did not get these black books, there's some right upstairs, get them in church before you leave, because this is your daily meditation for Lent. You write your Lenten plans in the beginning, and then you see what you could do every week as far as achieving. My Lenten plans are right there. Loving Lent, because Lent is so similar to what we're trying to do here at Pray It Off. Shedding the old, becoming a new creation, concentrating on God, trying to have a sacrifice. I don't know about you, but I think inherent in the word sacrifice is a little pain. Did you ever hear, I sacrificed for you. Didn't hurt at all. No, there's, there's always some pain. There's always some anguish. You want to lose weight. It's got to hurt a little. you got to say no thank you to the donuts and the cookies. Today was someone's birthday, first day of Lent. Her father he, like, expressed her this cake. And I, I, I asked her to describe it to me. It had cream cheese frosting. It was raspberry filling. It was one of the most beautiful looking cakes I've ever seen. I felt like I ate a peach. She described it. I looked at it. Didn't eat it. No thank you. The purpose of Lent is to deny ourselves, repent of our sins, and focus our lives to living according to the will of God. Listen to the first thing. Deny ourselves. If we allow ourselves to have every snack or every chip or every piece of pizza that comes our way, where is the denial? And then... As far as the sinning goes, as far as the repentance goes, I think we're all pretty good at that. I know the people in this room. They're some of the finest people I've ever met in my life. But I know that a lot of fine people are always fine for everybody else. And when it gets to themselves, they're like, I'm so tired. Just give me some pizza. We need to be there for other people and take care of ourselves too. One of the beauties, too, about Lent is that it's a season where we focus on Christ and his purpose and his sacrifice. 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 Christmas is great. Jesus is born. It's a beautiful thing. But Lent is what being a Christian is all about. Lent is not about the death of Jesus. It's about his resurrection. It's about that he took on sin and resurrected from the dead. We must learn to follow the Spirit of God and not our fleshly desires. I One person said, I didn't give up anything for Lent, but I said I'm going to exercise more. You might think, oh, oh that's a selfish intention. No, it isn't. There's Lenten in sex, uh, intentions, help the poor, do be more kind, go to Mass more often. Exercising and losing weight are just as much of a Lenten intention if you're sacrificing it and asking God to help you. Taking care of yourself is not a selfish thing. <coughs> Lent teaches us to imitate Christ. I don't know if anyone ever read the classic book, The Imitation of Christ, but it, I... I, it, it, it's a blueprint for how we should live our lives. We can be sorry, repent our sins, and be forgiven. But first, you have to be sorry. You have to be contrite. I always say that it's one thing to say, I want to lose weight. But then you have to do the work. 
anyone can say they're sorry, and if you don't not do it again, like you say, oh, I'm sorry, I swore 10 times, and the next day they're swearing like a sailor, and they're sorry again. Being sorry and changing means you're going to have to really try to change that behavior. Lent is a gift from God. It's about changing our lives, not merely for 40 days, but for all of eternity. You know, I have a funny cartoon at the back. Don't, don't flip to it now on the, on the uh, group sheet. It shows a woman in the grocery store, and her whole cart is full of chocolate. And her friend says to her, I, I thought you gave up chocolate for Lent. And she said, I did, but this is for the day after Lent. This is for when Lent's over. So are we doing that? Are we saying, I'm going to change my life for 40 days and then go right back to our old behavior? And that's what I think the beauty of Pray It Off is. You know, we come here every week. Karen once said it's like Mass. She goes to Mass. She goes to Pray It Off. This is what we do to stay on task, to stay focused, not just for Lent. I don't have, oh, please join Pray It Off for Lent. I don't do that. Pray it off is forever because we have to constantly concentrate on getting healthy and getting well. Lent also helps us to become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We got to clean that temple out. We got to take care of that temple. And another thing it says, I, I can't quote the Bible directly, but one of the big famous passages is don't let everyone see your sacrifice and you know go up, oh poor me, I can't have chocolate, or I'm on a diet, oh feel sorry for me, or I gave up this. I tell no one, not even my husband, what my Latin intentions are. They're my Latin intentions. Now when I say talk about it in the group, and you don't want to, you don't have to talk about anything in the group. You might say, well my, a couple of my Latin intentions are, are private. I'm just talking about when it comes to losing weight <laughs> and, and exercising. Don't think I want you to blab secret Latin intentions. Okay. And here's the most important thing. I find Lent a fun time. I find Lent a period of rejoicing. And I, I went to work yesterday, I went to 645 Mass, and Father Muha, man, when he puts those ashes on, he was like, oh, oh. You know, I felt like my whole face was one big ash, you know. And people were like, I'd be talking to someone in the hall, and they'd be like, hi, you know. But only one person said something. She was like, everyone was like, whoa, you know. And boy, they were hard to get off. I don't know. He really put them on their good. But the thing is, we need to be witnesses, joyful witnesses for the Lord. I'm going to stop right there, Bob. And the next topic I'm going to talk about.